standards are all singing and all dancing tonight. Let's start the show! Great guest for you tonight. I tell you, I couldn't be more excited if I was an Olympic swimmer from Strictly forgetting he's got a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Adam and Katya, the almost kissed. It was steamy. I mean, even Sean Walsh was thinking, mm, bit much. <laughs> Surely, with dancing like that, Adam is within touching distance of the final, and Katya's within touching distance of a semi. <laughs> But this year, Strictly uh, makes history by having two males dancing together, which is a lovely thing for gay equality. Strictly can now break up a same-sex relationship as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the curse of Strictly... I mean, what would stop a Strictly professional sleeping with a celebrity partner? Well, if your partner <laughs> is Tilly Ramsey, this. <laughs> <laughs> and look who we've got on the show tonight. Well, a little later, we'll be joined by acting legend Sir Ian McKellen will be here. <laughs> from Elton John and Charlie Puth! Yeah. But here with me now, he's a BAFTA-winning actor, writer and director. It's Stephen Merchant, everybody! <laughs> Dancing Queen and Sydney Judge, Matty Mabusi is here! <laughs> and they're starring together in the West End hit Cabaret. She's the Irish star of Judy, Chernobyl and Wild Rose. It's Jesse Buckley! <laughs> He's the Oscar BAFTA and Tony Award star of Fantastic Beasts and the Theory of Everything. It's Eddie Redmayne! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo. Lovely to see you all. So, Motti, were you yes. watching the end of that dance through fingers? Was it. I saw everything. I mean, <laughs> it was special, wasn't it? Well, I felt that way. I mean, every time everybody does a tango, Argentina, everybody gets a little bit nervous. But yeah, they were they were really in it. They were in it. Yeah, <laughs> very nearly in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Eddie, oddly, you've already had words of advice about appearing on Strictly. Yes, um, I. Uh, I work with a wonderful movement director, a woman called Alexandra Reynolds, who um, has helped me on the films I've done, and she's a dancer by trade. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a, one of the last films I did, I had to learn to waltz. Oh, and nice. um, she stopped me halfway through and she said, Eddie, if anyone ever <laughs> approaches you to um, join Strictly Come Dancing, there is only one answer, and it's no. Oh. It is. And I was deeply humiliated. So now I'm in a musical with Jesse uh, to make up for it, to try and prove to the world that I am capable of dancing, which, by the way, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. I'm sure you are. Uh, Jesse Buckley, you're a dancer. When I'm drunk, I am. <laughs> I'm excellent. No, you dancing, dancing was your first love. What are you talking about, Graham? <laughs> you know, we've got this little, little clip of you. I think you're, are you four or five in this? Yeah. Well, everybody does Irish dancing in Ireland. But like, not as well as you. Not as well as me. And not with the same level of dedication. Watch this, Motti. I think okay. you'll be very impressed. Yeah. Because, I don't mean to be rude, you slightly lose the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> slightly lose the crowd, but my God, Jesse Buckley is going to keep going. <laughs> OK, here she is, dancing of a storm. Look at her there, there she is. Lovely, lovely. Now, let's just see how the rest of the family are enjoying it. <laughs> now, someone thinks she needs more room. The girl needs more room. That's what we need. Move that sofa. Here we go. Yeah, more room. <laughs> Look at her, still going. Still going. Well done, oh. you. That's amazing. Oh, good. Very good. Is it actually true that in Ireland, like, everyone does Irish dancing at some point? Yeah. Well, you do it in school. You don't do school. it at home. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> over, over there, over there, you just call Irish dancing dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a serious sport, like, the kind of socks and the big, huge dresses and the, these little girls with these massive wigs, and it's, like, amazing, but it's kind of mad. It's quite intense. Yeah. It's quite intense. Yeah. So, that was you on camera, age four or five. You were a bit older your first time on television. Television, but it was quite a cool first appearance, Stephen. Well, <laughs> uh, that depends whether you have a picture or not. We do. <laughs> 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 
have a picture, <laughs> therefore I think we'll... Well, I'll let you decide whether you think... My first, I, my first ever TV appearance, I was on the TV coverage in the crowd at Glastonbury. See, that's cool. Wow. That is. Well, it, yes, it sounds cool, <laughs> unless you have a picture. <laughs> we, we do have a picture. Yeah. <laughs> well, I assume you're going to show that, so we may as well get it over with. OK, so this is... So did you know you are on camera? No, of course not. No, I was just, one in, just someone in the audience. I mean, of course, as always, I forgot that I'm six foot seven. <laughs> and therefore, there is a chance that you'll be able to see me in the crowd. <laughs> If you look carefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a picture of uh, you in, in the crowd. This is a good game, though. Yes. This is a good game. Where's Steve? Where's, where's, Wally? Like, where's Wally? I thought I was like, where's Wally? You can't me. You know, that, you know that thing when you kind of like, which is the panda I mean, amongst all the snowmen? It's like that. <laughs> OK, can you spot him? Eddie Redmayne, um, oh, you are so competitive. Deeply competitive. <laughs> OK, I'll give you a clue. Which, do you want a clue? Yeah, please. OK, to the right of the screen. To the right of the screen. I see him, I see him. Oh, you I don't. Yes, yes, you won. Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes! Yes! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, don't, you don't have a closer picture? We do. Oh, dear. <laughs> We've got a closer picture. Do you want to see that? Sure. OK, here it is. There he is. <laughs> now, you can see there I'm prepared if a cricket match was about to break out. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're protecting and the, yourself. I'm very, I'm very much... Well, I am protecting myself, Motsu, because the great thing about wearing a cricket hat to a music festival is it's a natural contraceptive. <laughs> uh, you, you are not going home with any sexually transmitted diseases. You're not going home with... Oh, I Stephen, I love that you're you literally, know. like, the same height as the people. Well, I know. Well, my girlfriend is not happy with me sat on her shoulders. She is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know I love common people. Shut up. <laughs> Stephen, I'm, just, I'm, I'm desperate for the, the book now, basically, having seen your, like, a sort of... Your version of Where's Wally? Like That's you, right. you at lots of events. <laughs> yeah. good, it's a good idea, though. Yeah. Not bad, is it? Thank you, yeah. yeah. We're not sharing the. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, let's get started. Eddie and Jesse uh, bring us news of a brand new production of Cabaret. It starts on the 15th of November at the Kit Kat Club wow. at the Playhouse Theatre. Uh, tickets on sale now. And I guess because of the famous film with Liza and Joel Grey, people think they know this show, mm. but the stage show is very different, and then this production's very different. Tell us what you can about it, who do you play, etc. Um, well, I play the MC, which is the Joel Grey uh, part that has also been played sensationally by Anne Cumming, and... They're both beautiful. The film and that production were extraordinary. But Jesse and I kind of... We, we love the musical and thought that there was a way to investigate it in a kind of different way. So you kind of enter into the underbelly of the theatre and from the second you arrive, there are musicians and dancers. You can eat uh, in the space. Oh, nice. And it's kind of... It's properly immersive and you... Uh, that's a slightly overused word, that, isn't it? Immersive, but you can kind of... I haven't used it for a long time. <laughs> 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 years. <laughs> years. <laughs> Uh, but the plan is that you basically properly l leave all your troubles outside and come into the decadence of the world of... Um, the Kit Kat Club. The Kit Kat Club. And you are? Sally Bowles. Yeah. yeah. And those songs are amazing songs. Yeah, it's been so fun. It's like... It, it, it's been... Cos I haven't done... A, I've only done one musical, which is my first ever job, like, back when I was tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's just so, and the company's amazing, and Rebecca Frecknell, who's directing, is amazing, and mm. Eddie's all right, and like. Um... <laughs> We're having like. It's getting better, but. You know. <laughs> so that dancing, it <laughs> working hard. Bro. I've got to give him a few Irish dancing lessons first. And <gasps> <gasps> that Ooh. kind of show. Yeah, anyway. Kaylee Bray, lovely. <laughs> uh, but no, but the weird thing is, Eddie, you have been preparing for this role for some time. I mean, uh, th there's <laughs> I I played the role before when I was. Uh, 18 years old at the Edinburgh Festival, um, and I've got a picture. I've got a picture of that. Are you? Now, are you you're in that. It's picture. another game of where's one. I found him. I found him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure I have. The, this this one here is oh, me. Oh, I didn't. Um, okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> Motsi was wrong. I, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was, oh, uh, yeah. So it was a student production, and we were sort of, as you can see, swimming in latex and PVC. But there was a moment where my it, it was at the Edinburgh Festival, and my my grandma. Um, who was then 80, and I, my grandma turns 100 next week, which is a <gasps> massive deal. Wow! Uh, I know, good deal, folks. Um, and 
she came to see it with, uh, with my cousin, and there was a moment in the beginning of the piece when my character was singing Willkommen, and, and it was, we were right in and amongst the audience, and I, could, I uh, heard her turn to my cousin and say, will you, will you, just, will you let me know when, when Eddie comes on? <laughs> and uh, which, said, that, that guy is sort of leering in your face. <laughs> that was a bit shocking. She was, sadly, um, my grandma, she's in a home in Edinburgh now, so, so couldn't come see the, the new production. Um, but I went up just before rehearsal started and um, basically went to see her and put on, on YouTube, you can kind of get a uh, karaoke. Uh, cab cabaret karaoke. <laughs> and so the poor care home had no idea what was going on as I basically sort of sang the entire piece to my... Oh, and I think, so but at which nice. point, even your parts, Jesse, which I... Great. Was, you no. can do them too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so she now has seen... Um, yeah, so I went Aww. and gave a sort of private performance to my brother. <laughs> Aww. You did the whole, the whole show? The, I mean, <laughs> was she just dozing off and then waking <laughs> up? And... She actually Where's my Werther's <laughs> original? <laughs> She was, she, she was definitely dozing <laughs> off or saying, I'm closing my eyes just because I'm yeah. enjoying it so much. Oh. <laughs> I'm not bored, I want to hear exactly. the words. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly what I was going to And tell me this, you, you mentioned that it's immersive and you were in the Kit Kat Club. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what are, I mean, do, do if we go uh, as punters, mm. are we, how involved are we? <laughs> well, my, my wife, Hannah, um, when I when we decided to do uh, cabaret, she was like, it's, it's not going to involve um, audience participation, is it? And, and I said, I don't, I don't think so, but it is going to be quite immersive. She said, you have to guarantee me there's no audience participation, because it, it, she literally has a sort of absolute detestation of it. And also, Hannah has this weird thing by which if she's embarrassed or humiliated, she start like, tears start coming <laughs> out of her eyes. Um, so, no, but there is no audience participation, but it is quite... <laughs> that, I, that I know of, a little bit. As far as Hannah's concerned, anyway. Yeah. yeah, opening night, you lied to me! <laughs> Screaming tears, <laughs> Screaming tears. <laughs> um, just for an audience member, you would think Motsu Mabusi, she's a performer, so she'll be a very good audience member. But was it Cirque du Soleil you went to see? Yeah, it was so bad. So uh, we flew in from... <laughs> no, not the show. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but, so what happens is we flew in from Fiji, sorry guys. So, and we... <laughs> we, we landed in Las Vegas and we're like, okay, I don't want to fall asleep, jet lag. And so we went to the theatre and I said to my ex-husband at the time, he's like, please wake me up because I don't want to fall asleep. It's like, don't worry, just relax. So I fell asleep and then, honestly, I heard like this, happy birthday to you. And they had the camera on me. Everyone from stage were right in front of me. They had little red lights. And obviously I woke up and Wah! And everybody <laughs> saw it. Absolutely everybody, everyone. And so, yeah, finally I got divorced. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking, he's gonna sue me, stop it. <laughs> it was a contributing factor. <laughs> yeah, it was on the minus yes. list. <laughs> yes, Las Vegas, mm, out. <laughs> um, Stephen, are you a fan of audience participation? Definitely not. <laughs> no, well, I'm too big, I just get in the way. Um, but I have, I've, I've ended up, I, well, I, is this audience participation? I, I went to see Bruce Springsteen. Once. Ooh, wow. And um, I'm a big Bruce Springsteen fan, and I, and I love the guy. And it was a big stadium show, and it was sort of 20,000 people. And I managed to get down in the front, and I didn't realize, but he, he kind of he falls back into the crowd uh, during the show, during Hungry Heart, and, he, and the, the fans kind of carry him on their hands oh, wow. back to the stage. Oh. And so on the first night, I went and I sort of videoed, videoed this uh, and kind of was very excited about it. it was, and, and I thought, well, I'd love to be one of those people that gets to touch the great man, you know, and, and be part of the show. <laughs> and so I went back the following night. I got another ticket, and I, and I was so determined, because it's like I knew where he was going to be, at what time, <laughs> what he was going to be wearing. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to touch this 70-year-old man. <laughs> I, was, I was like a stalker in an old people's home. Do you know what I mean? It's like, come on. <laughs> and, and I get there, and, uh, and I'm sure enough, sure enough, hungry heart, and he comes out, and, he's, and, he, and he falls back into the crowd, and, he's, and I sort of manage to line up, and sort of get in <laughs> Line and he's coming down and everyone's doing this and he comes in and, and the boss is about to get to me and I receive the boss like that and I start to do this but I forget again that I'm six foot seven <laughs> and so so Bruce Springsteen starts to go upwards <laughs> like that. 
the person behind is regular height and they can't reach <laughs> for receiving. And so I'm holding, and there's a moment in time when I'm taking the full weight of Bruce Pritchard. <laughs> That I'm going to drop him and he's going to break his neck. And he's quite a small man, but he's quite, he's more, he's surprisingly heavy. He's like, he's like, have you ever moved a sofa bed? <laughs> and I'm holding him like this, and I'm just thinking, what would my dad do? And my dad would always say, bend at the knees. <laughs> so I start sort of bending down. I'm not to and he's still going, hungry, hard. <laughs> for the people <laughs> behind and he carries on back safely. <laughs> but honestly, afterwards, I just remember thinking, if I had dropped the boss <laughs> and he, like, broke his neck, <gasps> and imagine me going back to, like, future shows and he's there sort of in a wheelchair on the stage <laughs> and he's just... Oh. He could just... The man in the cricket hat! Get rid of him! <laughs> PTSD, you know. <laughs> that was my... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, well, audience is bigger than ever for series 19. 19 series of Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, now, what's in music? What is this? This is your third year. Yes, my third year. And uh, how often since you've been a judge has your sister OT won? <laughs> <laughs> she won twice. <laughs> but you know, I planned it. I'm just asking. It. I mean, I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking. Uh, yes, I planned it all. You know, I put some <laughs> oil so Jamie slipped and fell, <laughs> and then she got bobated. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, it's funny. People kind of think I have the power of that, but not yet. Do <laughs> <laughs> you feel bad criticizing her? No, actually, I don't look at my sister. I, like, I look at her partner, so I, I kind of not feel so bad. Yeah. But after the show, I'll be like, okay, yeah, not bad. Oh, well done. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, I focus more on the celebrity. Yeah, right. It, yeah. It, it's easier. But I guess it's the same because Anton is now one of the judges. Yeah. He looks so happy not mm, to be he dancing. He is, he is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he, he watches them doing the Latin dances and he's like, oh, thank God, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is the thing, isn't it, that... Dancers do judge other dancers. It's not unusual. It's actually the norm. This is what happens. <laughs> After you dance a while, then you're allowed to judge the others. And we're having so much fun with Anton. I re I'm really happy he's there because, uh, yeah, it's kind of... I feel normal now. <laughs> right. And uh, does Craig hate you or is that just he laughs? He's obsessed with me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a stalker. I think he's going to come out as me, like, in a few years. Because he's, like, backstage, he speaks to me with German, like, in German, but he's always counting and always saying nine. And, like, he told me he goes quite often to um, Berlin, so he really likes Germany. But, uh, yeah, he's really obsessed with me. Like, I have to call security sometimes. <laughs> Is that why the Perspex is there? It's not COVID. No, no. Not... That's why I wore those shoulder pads. I was like, stay away from me. Hey, listen, the lineup this year is so high. And of course, the first male same sex yes. couple this year, Johannes and John Waite. Now, they're so good. I mean, I'm, also, I'm so glad they're good. Yeah. I mean, we're glad they're good. Uh, um, yeah, we're glad they're good, to be honest. And we've had um, different kind of pairing in Germany. So I'm glad that we are kind of also moving with the time and just having an open Strictly, which is great, I feel. But now, here's my thing. <laughs> Have they... Are they too good too soon? Like, because they've got no journey to go on, can they win? Can you tell Ooh. them a fan of the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can they win? Well, everything is possible this year. I would say we've got a um, kind of a, a, a team where everything is possible but you need the journey you must have the journey you don't want to peak too soon because like we've seen it all <laughs> so you, you need to kind of yeah they have to keep it interesting for all of us well talking of same-sex dancing this is really beautiful i think you'll like it um stephen merchant on the extras dvd there's a clip <laughs> of <laughs> Of, Go on, you, Graham, yeah. of you and Barry <laughs> Meestenders yeah. doing a beautiful, uh, I think I, you'd call this contemporary dance. I, I think, think. we just... Yeah, I think we'd call it contemporary. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd call it contemporary dance, yeah. Graham, yeah. I think, it, I think it's couple's choice. I think it, you'd call it couple's, couple's choice. choice. It's probably about week four, I would have thought. Yeah. Uh, feast your eyes on this monster. Oh, wow. <laughs> Now, to be 
before you ask me, Motsi, I will never do Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> because I am happy with my girlfriend. <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, but, you know, when you say that, it seems we have to do something about but, but, that. Um, <laughs> but you can see the kind of moves that you would be, that you'd be working with if, if I wasn't But I, I'm really impressed. You've got a really nice, I saw circulation. Yeah. I saw this. <laughs> I saw that yeah. going, the hands are nice and long. Well, and you so, know what? We did not use a professional choreographer. <laughs> so, you know, I can I mean, see that too. Yeah, you can see that as well. <laughs> but now, Jesse, seriously though, you, you say you don't dance, but are, but you must dance. Yeah, I do, I dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but like, so doing the choreography for Cabaret, are you daunted by that? Or are you thinking, yes, bring it on? Um, what well, every like the dancers in that the, the Kit Kat girls are so fabulous. <laughs> what I'm daunted by is the height of their heels because I look at them and it makes me want to get sick. <laughs> um, but I know it's been so fun. We've got an amazing choreographer called Julia who does this thing called whacking and punking. Oh, wow. Don't ask me to do it because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah. um, are those technical terms, Motsi? Yes, whacking and punking. Yes, there are specific ty mm. uh, types of dancing which I also don't do. I will respect it. <laughs> Stephen does though. So <laughs> I think I've seen him do some tonight <laughs> with his life. <laughs> It's a bit like that, isn't it? <laughs> There's a bit always though in the morning during the during the movement uh, warm-ups where and, and really the the cast of, of of dancers and singers are formidable, and we do these warm-ups in the in the morning. They're amazing in this big rehearsal space, and always across the room, Jesse and I can catch the like eyes, shit. straining tightly to <laughs> touch our shit oh. and load on it. Um, exactly. Yeah, but is that weird thing when you're talking to a dancer and suddenly their leg is it's by it. their ear? Yeah, they do that. <laughs> Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. And they're in heels as well, which is like even more. But it's also mad. exhausting. I mean, oh, yeah. Sean and I, after that, have to have a lie down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Tiring. It is. It is exhausting. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, it's a sport. Yeah. yeah. When, yeah. Did, when did you give up competitive? Or have you given up competitive? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I have. have. What did you do? I was a uh, Latin American champion. I was German champion. Wow. So I did that for quite a while, and then uh, I decided to stop because then I started doing the show in Germany and you couldn't do both. But I love dancing. Actually, I wanted to be a musical uh, like performer, but we didn't have that situation in South Africa where I could kind of test my voice and then dance and then go on stage. We didn't have that. But uh, so I continued to dance. I tried to test my voice. Nobody likes it except my <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, stop. My whole team is like, stop. Oh. But my daughter thinks it's beautiful, so that was kind that of fun. <laughs> like, sing, mommy, sing. Oh. <laughs> hey, now, Stephen Burton brings us a new comedy drama series. It's called The Outlaws. It's on BBC One on the 25th of October at 9 p.m. And this is. I mean, really your baby. I mean, you wrote it, you directed it, you're in it, your hometown. Tell us about it. Yes, that's right. Yes, it's, it's a show. It's a sort of uh, a comedy drama thriller set in Bristol. Um, yes. No, you're right to cheer. Um, <laughs> I'm calling that a cheer. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Could you beef that up in the... Uh... <laughs> um, well, people don't think naturally, I think, of Bristol as a sort of place for, uh, for sort of crime and, and, you know, and stuff. But um, we were in 2019, and these guys may know, we were voted the cocaine capital of Europe. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which we're very proud of. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we are. We're, uh... Is that on a sign as you come that's in? Right. Yeah. No, well, that's right, yeah. No, we're famous for three things, crack and Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there is, there was always this kind of, there was always like a crime underbelly when I was growing up in Bristol. And my mum uh, was involved with community service. You know, if you if you get a drink driving charge or some minor crime, you have to do community service. Um, my, sorry, my mum wasn't a criminal. She, uh, <laughs> she, well, I think she stole some of those pencils from Argos, but that was. Really <laughs> but uh, she sort of would mind these uh, these offenders and sort of look after them and supervise them. And I always thought that was an interesting area for a TV show because you have the most unlikely groups of people coming together that wouldn't normally meet each other. So, you know, she would tell me about people that would come through her door and there was... I remember there was an old man that used to steal cabbages from allotments and, and he would always get caught and he would keep coming back, you know, year after year. And clearly it doesn't work because he would always be, you know, always doing crimes again. And, and she figured out eventually that um, he, was just, he was just lonely and he didn't have oh. sort of friends and family. So he was sort of stealing to sort of enjoy the community service experience. So there'd be sort of someone like him, like an old guy like him, and then there was a... a I'm not joking, there was a kid I went to school with We'll call him Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
he was coming through the doors constantly, and he would, and so, and he'd come in and he'd say, "Hello, Mrs. Merchant. You know, how's Stephen doing? Oh, he's doing his A levels. What have you been up to, Dave? Oh, you know, I was just trying to chip a Banksy off the wall, and they arrested <laughs> me, and I'm doing 120 hours." And and he was, I remember, I would talk to him, and he was the worst. He was the laziest criminal I've ever heard of. He he once he once broke into a, a house, and he was stealing the TV, and the homeowners came back, and they went. Dave, what are you doing? <laughs> and he went, I'm not Dave. <laughs> and they went, yeah, you are. You live next door. <laughs> <laughs> he was breaking into his own neighbor's house. <laughs> I mean, at least go one road over. <laughs> um, so my mum would tell me about these groups of people, and I just thought it was such an un unusual... Like, imagine if the old guy with the cabbages and him were, like, talking and what that would be like. And then I thought, well, they're already criminals, so we could have a kind of thriller story to it. And so we sort of combined that together. And I think, hopefully, it's quite a sort of entertaining, you know, mixture of sort of humour and drama and, and thriller. It is very, very funny. We've got a clip. Uh, I'm not sure what your parents will make of this scene. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is you in your car uh, with your new prostitute friend. Oh, well, this is, this is why I end up doing community <laughs> service. OK, yeah. fair enough. Oh. <laughs> oh. Open your window, sir. Good evening, officer. This is my wife. What? If you're wondering who this lady is, it's my wife. We've happily married. Can I see your driving license, sir? Yep. Just gonna reach for it in the glove compartment. Mm -hmm. I'm unarmed. No, 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 nobody. Oh! oh god! Oh god! Oh god! I know a lawyer if you need one. Oh, no thanks. I actually am a lawyer. <laughs> but do you know a tire guy? Very good. Okay. It's time to meet my next guest. He's one of our best love stars of stage and screen. Always a pleasure to welcome Sir Ian McKellen, everybody! Oh, I'll I'll I'm, 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 I'm waving at you. I'm waving at you. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Our... <laughs> Good evening. Good Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Ian McAllen, everybody. <laughs> I don't mean this in any rude way, but are you in costume? <laughs> I'm in Paul Smith's. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> oh, you mean the hat? Y yes, I was. Well, I did well, notice. I'm, it. I'm hiding something. <clears throat> My head. <laughs> 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 I thought you might ask me to take it off. Oh, take it off then. Yeah. Do you want to take it off? He invites gentlemen around to have a chat and then asks them to get undressed. But I... <laughs> <laughs> the well, I mean, I'm, in, I'm in a play and I have to play someone even older than I am, and I have a lot of whiskers, and I thought I'd shave my head. <gasps> Easter your heart out, Patrick Stewart. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I put this back on? You can, of course. I'm such a fool. You, know, you look great. Right? Great. Yeah. great. You look you great. great. You look very, very Thank you very much. I'll pop it back on. OK, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, then, uh, it, yeah. uh, is, is that arranged nicely now? Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's very nice. So you've done this for the, the Cherry Orchard, which is under the Theatre Royal in Windsor until November the 13th. I know. No clashing, no mm. clashing. So tell us about the Cherry Orchard and who you play. Well, a Cherry Orchard is written by my second favourite playwright, Anton Chekhov, who's a Russian, lived just over 100 years ago. Uh, and he wrote four masterpieces, and this is the last play that he wrote, The Cherry Orchard. And it's about a family in Russia who have a huge cherry orchard the size of Hyde Park in London, and uh, they have to sell it to pay their debts. Now, you think that might be an upsetting play, and a bit of a tragic and, tragedy, and for them it is, they're terribly upset. But because they're so foolish and they've spent all their money and, and their wastrels, really, and um, you can't help laughing at them, so... Chekhov called it a comedy, and, and uh, some people think it's a tragedy, and probably it's both. 
and I play the uh, family retainer to uh, Francesca Annis, who's playing my boss, who everybody falls in love with, <laughs> on stage and in the audience, of course. <laughs> and um, there we are. And I have to uh, <laughs> serve them coffee and drinks and... Uh, well, and you're laugh. fine whiskers. Your whiskers are extraordinary. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. It's the sort of part you play right at the end of your career. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. You just played Hamlet in the same, in the same block I of have, plays. yes. Yes, because it's the same cast. You did Hamlet. Well, yes, we're doing the old thing of having a company of, of actors yeah. who do more than one play at a time. And uh, this is our second uh, play and the last for the time being. And, yes, I was playing a young man then. I'm now playing an old man. The funny thing is, when I was playing Hamlet, running up and down stairs and all sorts, I felt fit as a fiddle. Now I'm playing an old fellow and, and bent double and leaning on the stick. I, I can come off aching all over. <laughs> so my advice to anyone of my age is keep active, keep moving. Don't settle down in your chair or, or use a stick if you can avoid it. Yeah. And I know it's so ridiculous to talk about, it's so kind of reductive of what actors do, but, you know, Hamlet's an enormous part. You have to learn that, but at the mm. same time as knowing that, you were learning the cherry orchard. Well, that's what actors do, or used to do. You know, when I started, there was a company of actors doing exactly that. Different play every two weeks, three weeks. Oh, wow. The great company was in Bristol. Uh, I was in Coventry. And, uh, yeah, you were playing at night and rehearsing during the day. And bef previous generation, they would do a different play every week. Wow. And sometimes two plays a week, and oh. sometimes play them twice every wow. evening. Mm. We have it easy, don't we? No. You've had, how, many, how many weeks have you had on, on uh, cabaret? Rehearsals. Uh, we've had about... Six weeks. We, well, yeah, I think we've had about six in total. You better be good. I know. Particularly as I'm coming to see you, it, oh. it's my Christmas tree from Anthony oh. Cotton in Coronation Street. And we're going to sit in, we're going to sit in a box. Ooh, wow. Ooh, I gather we get to eat food and we'll be able to throw you scraps. <laughs> 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 um, but now, Eddie, you've met Ian McCann before, but under less happy circumstances. I, I, I don't know, Ian, if, if you know that, but um, when I was about uh, nine or ten years old, I auditioned. I had a screen test with you for the film you did of Richard III. And, um, I... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um... You, were, you gave a wonderful audition. <laughs> 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 but at the same point, I, was, I remember it being like a seminal moment for me. I'm such an oh. admirer of yours, and, um, and we have met over the years. We have but met. I also never when forget... I saw your uh, Richard II. And but that's what I was going to say. There's a terrifying thing that happens sometimes in theatre when... And hearing you're coming to see Cabaret... Yeah, terrifying. Don't tell me what <laughs> <boxes. Exactly. laughs> <laughs> Quite often when you play particularly Shakespearean parts, you know, obviously they've been played before and by very good actors. And I remember when I was doing Richard II, there was one seat at the Donmar Warehouse where, you know, the actor who had played, it was the Richard II seat. And so it was sort of <laughs> Ben Wishaw, Ian McKellen, <laughs> Derek Jacobi. And every night I would sort of come, oh, God, <laughs> be good, be good. Um, but you were very generous afterwards. Because you were also, very good, very yeah. good. So What's this story that. about uh, you not getting the part in Richard the Third? Yeah, well, the part is that uh, the end of the story. Sadly, yeah. I, I gave everything, my, everything my oh. nine-year-old acting self could give. Um, <laughs> it was the director, wasn't good enough. Richard Longcrane. He just <laughs> didn't go for you, but. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> it was very good, Don't though. The film was very Just good. imagine what your career might have been like. <laughs> 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 Do you know what was worse, though? I went, so this was, sorry, I was auditioning to play one of the princes in the tower, and it just happened that the, the school I was at next term, they were doing a production of Richard III, and I auditioned to, to play the princes in the tower, and I didn't, I didn't get part in the school play. <laughs> <laughs> Not meant to be. Not meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> and, Jesse, have you, you've met Ian before. We've met, but you, we was at a dinner, so we probably... We probably both didn't remember at the did end of the dinner. Did we have a dance? What, what, who, yeah. <laughs> we did, yeah. We did, did we? have a dance, did we? we? A little... Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you really have a dance? <laughs> <laughs> if the lady can't remember, I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> Motley... I, on the whole, I don't dance, but certainly not professionally. At home. Yes. Yeah. But usually, you... on, usually on my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Motsi would never lure you onto the dance floor on Strictly. 
No, I, I, <laughs> you, no, I, I, I wouldn't. I'm not as brave as Stephen. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm very kind. The thing, is, the thing is, I'm a professional, so I like to get it right and, and do it as best as possible. And that's all about amateurs trying to be professional. Well, that's not my gig, really. <laughs> I, love it. I love watching it, of course. Yeah. Who doesn't? But some people have a natural talent that they do. maybe just comes. Maybe That's you will right. discover something very beautiful about your movement. Uh, there's not a lot beautiful about me, no. <laughs> not, not me. <laughs> the thing is about dancing. It's a very natural thing for human beings to do. Animals don't do it much, do they? No. It's, humans like to express themselves through movement. And I'm always telling uh, actors, look, every human being looks themselves different from everybody else in the world, which is an amazing thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We are all different facially. And we are physically too, and we are vocally, mm -hmm. and our movement has to be different. So, so it, each character I play, I, I always give him a walk, which is not my own. So I, which is a sort of dance, isn't yes. it? So it's, it's the same sort of thing, but uh, so what formal was your dancing Hamlet with walk? rules I couldn't what do. What was your Hamlet walk then? How is that different from your regular walk? Well, it was rather... Um, <laughs> Young. Oh, young. Springy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, n n not doing this when I looked, but, but, but doing that. Yeah, see, right, do, right. The, yeah. It had, had thing, the muscles were all working. Yeah. <clears throat> Whereas Fierce in the Cherry Orchard is, is, is very decrepit. Yeah. And a little bit shaky. I, I was wondering, one of the reviews said uh, um, you could tell that the character had, uh, was beginning to have Parkinson's disease because of the trembling of his hands, and I didn't know I was doing it. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So I got the rest right, and, and this sort of followed, like uh, DNA. Well, or you should get yourself checked out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I didn't like to say anything, but I... Was... <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, Stephen, of course, you and Ian go way back. Oh. Oh, well, Ian, Ian was very kindly and very graciously was in our show Extras, oh. playing, playing a twisted version of himself, and it's yeah. still one of my proudest moments and one of my funniest uh, just it, I don't know if people saw it but it was where <laughs> Ian is supposedly giving sort of acting lessons to Ricky's character and just say how do I act so well <laughs> how do I know where to stand it's written someone shows me <laughs> how do I know what to say it's written it's in the written script down. <laughs> and it, just delivered. it was just an absolute joy and it was one of, it was the first time I'd ever worked with an actor of sort of Ian's caliber and just seeing just being behind the monitor and just seeing him kind of be moving outside, just watching him in the room, just bringing it to life. It was... I, I can't wait to see you on well, the stage, because it must be electrifying. It's the, one of the best scripts I've, I've ever had to learn and perform. The, the laughs just fall <laughs> out of you because of the, 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 the way the thing's written. And up to now, I, I thought it was uh, Ricky Gervais, who takes all the credit for everything, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I've done it, but, now I realise that Stephen had more than a hand in it. I thank you very, very much. Well, and if you, you want to see it, it's on YouTube. Sometimes, late at night, if I'm feeling really unhappy and alone and want cheering up, I, I look it up and, and, oh, and so laugh sweet. my head off. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, well, Ian, thank you very much for dropping in to see us. The Cherry Orchard continues at the Theatre Royal Windsor. Ian McKellen, everybody! <laughs> uh, right, it's time for music. This man has topped the charts for over 50 years, and now it brings us a brand new album of collaborations. Here performing, after all, with Charlie Puth, it is Elton John! <laughs>
just lovely. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. You want to say, uh, you I'll stand like up, at the yeah. children's table, so okay. I feel like... <laughs> I'll stand. Yeah, go, stand, stand. There you go. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Congratulations. The album, The Lockdown Sessions, that's out today. And this is an album of extraordinary collaborations like this one. Was this always at the back of your mind that you were going to do this album? Not at all. I was going to do nothing. Uh, but at the start of lockdown, we'd just come from Australia in 2020, got to L.A., I went to a restaurant, met Charlie for the first time. Um, and he said, well, I live four doors away from you. Um, <laughs> if you feel like it, come up and write a song. I have a studio. So I went up to his house and we wrote this song pretty quickly. And I came back to England and people just started to ask me to play and sing on their records. And so the, the project grew and grew and grew until I had a germ of an album. And uh, that's how it started off. But it was Charlie's track, which was originally for his album that started the whole thing. OK, that idea of Elton John coming to your house, is yeah. that quite stressful? <laughs> um, it's, it, it's more interesting that we're four doors away no. from it. Yeah, I'm thinking great real estate for you. <laughs> I, I, I had a good eye three years ago. <laughs> but, uh, but is it true that Elton met your parents while he was at your house? Yeah, one of the proudest moments of my life is having... Uh, because they didn't know he was coming over, it was a bit cheeky. <laughs> and they came into my studio and you started explaining how you wrote Tiny Dancer to them. And that's just the, the, I've never seen my dad's face go completely pale. <laughs> but like, he was so, it, it, you were so nice to them. And my mom's actually here now backstage. She's, she can't believe what's happening. It's cool, I mean, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very it, It's cool. Elton John. Yeah. And, uh, but I know Elton gave you some advice when he signed his autobiography for you. Yes, he said, uh, dear Charlie, I opened the book up and it's a nice handwriting. He says, dear Charlie, don't do any of this. <laughs> Love Elton. <laughs> I've read the book. That is good advice. It's good advice. You, you had a lot of fun. And very quickly, uh, sadly, the, the leg of the tour that should be happening now, not happening, but it is back on track. Yes, this leg is not working. Um, <laughs> my leg is not working. Um, I'm having to have a, a hip replaced. Um, and by the time this show goes out, hopefully, it will have been replaced. Excellent. Um, and I'll be in rehab, and hopefully in a couple of months I'll be raring to go and, and retaking part in the World Limbo Championships. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> uh, well, listen, we look forward to you getting back on the road. Thank you so much for that beautiful performance. Uh, get well soon. I hope the recovery goes uh, brilliantly. Ladies and gentlemen, Elton John and Charlie Proof! Thank you. Woo! Take care, man. Did you realise you were wearing a different tie last week? No, it wasn't different, was it? <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> have, I, have I lost weight or gained weight? <laughs> I was thinking about it and I was like, have I put on weight? <laughs> <laughs> you look good, you look good. Yeah. But the run-in was good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. great run-in. Acting, not that hard. <laughs> 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 uh, right, it, that's nearly it. Before we go, uh, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello. 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 Uh, what's your name, sir? I'm Lars. Lars? Yes. Okay. Are you a real person, Lars? Are <laughs> 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 you <have> people? <laughs> okay, Lars. Uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm Norwegian, but live here in London. Such a good accent. God. It is. It's almost like he's putting it on. <laughs> <laughs> Please never ask him to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Lars, why, why did you move to London? Oh, I moved to England because of my wife. Um, and we just moved to London this summer. And I guess for my sake, it uh, basically. sounds German. No, uh, I'm not Norwegian. German. I'm Norwegian. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I moved to London. I wanted to do something different. I didn't really need to move. I'm working from home, done it for 20 years, and I thought this was doing something different. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't your story, was it? No. No, that's <laughs> not my story. Okay. I'll, I'll be going with your story, Lars. Okay, this is a few years ago. I was uh, probably 18 at the time, and a friend of mine, uh, he, uh, <laughs> uh, he um, asked me to go into the pharmacy to do a pregnancy test. Uh, or buy a pregnancy test for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, luckily there was nobody in there really except for the lady serving me, and uh, she said to me, "Oh, um, I hope you get the result uh, you want." Uh, at this time, I had just got a new girlfriend, and it was the first time I was ever going to visit her that night. And uh, we were in the middle of a movie when uh, her mom came in. And it was the lady from the pharmacy. Oh! No!
got time for it. If you'd like to have a go with the red chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via website at this very address. And please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight, Elton John and Charlie Puth. <laughs> Ian McKellen. <laughs> Stephen Merchant. Jesse Nelson, rapper Tiny Temper, Hollywood star Salma Hayek, actors Jamie Dornan and Dame Judi Dench, and a very special appearance by Bruce Springsteen and President Barack Obama. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Can you dance your way into someone's heart? I like the way you move. BBC Three's new dating show streaming now on iPlayer. Well, next tonight here on BBC One, Matthew McConaughey with a cast to die for in a time to kill. Thank you.